Okay, well I'm ready to get started on the assembly. So I'm going to move some of the junk out of the way here first. Workbench. Uh -huh. I cut around 90 of these pins and I didn't mention it before but the 7 64 inch hole and this 12 gauge wire means it's not a tight fit at all. It's, it's not really slack either. It's just a comfortable fit you can say. It can move around a little bit there. You don't want to have these too tight. The next thing I want to do is not really uh, strictly necessary here in the workshop, but I want to get rid of these pencil marks that are along the side here so that they won't show when I open and close the blind. I'm just going to stand those off. What I'm going to do to assemble this is I'm going to clamp it down to my workbench, drill pilot holes for two and a half inch screws, drive the screws in, then take the joints apart, glue it, and put it back together. When I attach the top rail, I'm going to make sure that the rabbit faces the other way. The bottom one faces into the room, the top one faces out towards the window. I'm going to take that and position it, clamp it down. Fill the pilot hole and drive the screw. I'll go ahead and do the same thing for the other style. I want to get the frame fully dry assembled before I go any further. What I want to do now is I want to ease the corners in here a little bit. Not really important, well that important down the workshop here, but if you're making them for inside your house you want to do a lot more sanding than I've been doing on this one. All the slats would have to be sanded and the frame here would have to be sanded as well. I'm just going to break the sharp edge with the sanding block. Now I'll show you how the fit is. The slats were cut so that they would fit in this opening with about a sixteenth of an inch to spare on the end here. You don't want these tight at all. Next thing I need to do is take it apart, at least partially. I've got to take this style off and then put glue on these joints here, reassemble it, then I can take the other side off completely and start putting the slats in. This is the benefit of screwing everything together first before you glue it, then it doesn't slide around when you go to screw, <laughs> go to screw it back together. I'm going to tighten that in and then wipe off the excess, squeeze out. Um, what I'm going to do is just line up the other style here and then I'm going to start to get the pin put in, slide it part of the way in to the hole. And what it does is it comes part of the way out of the other side so that I'm not trying to wrestle with it. I'm just going to get some glue now and squeeze a little into the joint there. Let that run down a little bit. And then I can put the two halves, you could say, together. And then I can drive the screws. The last thing I need for the panel is a rod that's about 32 inches long, half inch square. And I'll just cut that from a piece of pine. Okay, the rod gets attached to the knuckles here with number four screws, like I mentioned before. To keep the slats all flat, I've weighed them down with some strips of wood just laid on here. And I'm going to take this drill bit and I'm going to sharpen the end of the shank so that I can push it through the hole that's in the knuckle to make a mark on the rod. I've got all the holes drilled in the rod. I'm going to lay it in place. I've got it oriented the way it was before. I've got these small screws. I just need to drive them in. I'm going to drive them in until they're snug and then I'm going to slack them off maybe half a turn. Okay, I'm going to try it in the opening and see what it looks like 
with it, uh, you can, what I'm calling right side up. That's with the slats opening like that. Stand back and very little lights coming through. Even through the nail holes, you can't see anything. And when you open it all the way up, it looks pretty good. The only thing I might want to do is get rid of this stuff on the window now that I don't need it. I came out here this morning and I made the other one, and you can see that's there. I take the first one down and put the hinges on it. The barrel of the hinge lifts over the frame like that. And to space them, I'm just going to hold it at the top there and move it down the width of itself. Then got these small screws here that came with the hinge. I'm just going to drive those in by hand. They're very small. You really don't want to drive these in with an impact driver or drill. And you strip them out or twist them off. To hold the panel one eighth of an inch above the bottom sill there, I'm going to tape a piece of wood on that's sticking in and this will sit on the sill and space the panel up. Now I've only driven one screw in each of the hinges into the frame. I want to check the panel and see the gap. The gap in the middle is perfect, one eighth of an inch. And I want to see how they line up on the face as well. I can see that the top is flush but the bottom is kicked out a little bit. So that means to correct that I can push this hinge in further or I can come out further on the top with that one. So to stop on the bottom, I just cut a piece that's 3 eighths of an inch thick and I'm going to tack it in place with a few brads. And for the astrical, I'm just going to use some glue and some pin nails to hold that in place. And that's it. They're finished. I still need to make some handles. I might buy small metal handles to go here to make it a little bit easier to open and close them. Close like that. You can see how much light they block and you can open them up like that to let the light in and close them again. Well that's it for this one. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope it was informative too. The many comments about how tedious the work is when you're doing this. Uh, that's true with almost anything that's, you know, if you're making sets of something, you're going to run into a lot of tedium. In this case, you got those small parts that uh, the best way to do it is the way I did it. And that's just to dig in and start making them, make a bunch of them. And then you're left with, you know, the more tolerable work after that. I've made up my mind to keep them the wood grain color. They blend in with the rest of the stuff that's on the walls around here. None of that stuff is painted. The walls are painted, the trim and everything else is painted. But I think that really goes better with the tool board, the cabinets and whatnot.